Glory to your name, Father God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Father God, we thank you. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you. We are so grateful, oh God. We are grateful to you, Father God. Thank you, Father God, for this day, oh God. Thank you for bringing us to this time and this place right now, oh God. We thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus, Father God. And we pray and ask you, oh God, that you would forgive us all sins, iniquities, trespasses, and transgressions in the name of Jesus, Father God. Father God, we just pray right now for clean hands and pure hearts, asking that you would restore and renew in us right and steadfast spirits, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. Father God, we pray and ask, Father God, that you continue, Father God, to, Father God, speak, Father God, to us through your word, Father God, giving us uh, knowledge and understanding, oh God. Father God, by your Holy Spirit, Father God, we ask that you continue to reveal yourself, oh God, as you have, Father God, Father God, every night that we've come, Father, and sat at your table. And Father God, reveal, Father God, to us, your people and who we are in you, O oh God. Father God, we just thank you, Father God, for truth. We thank you, Father God, for understanding. And Father God, be glorified in us and through us, O oh God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Well, so last week we uh, completed chapter 65 and we did do a couple of verses in 66. So we'll go ahead... Um, and we'll begin chapter 66. We'll begin at verse one tonight. This is our last and final chapter of Isaiah 66. It has been a year, believe it or not. It has been a year, a little over a year since we began. Time has moved so swiftly. And it's just, it's, it's amazing what God is doing, but he's doing it speedily. And we all see that in all things as we look and see what's going on around us. So we'll begin tonight in chapter 66, uh, verse, we're going to start at verse one. And it reads, heaven is my throne, <clears throat> thus saith the Lord. Heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. And earth is my footstool. Where is the house that you will build for me? For all those things my hand has made and all those things exist, says the Lord. But on this one will I look, on him who is poor and of a contrite spirit and who trembles at my word. And um, I gave last week Isaiah uh, 57, 15. It reflected back on that word that we read earlier. It said, for thus saith the, uh, the high and lofty one who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit to receive the spirit of the humble and to revive the, the heart of the contrite one. And so basically what is being said here, the most high say it's the broken, it's the humble that the most high hears. In fact, some verses say he cannot, he will not deny. So that, that is the part, that is what the uh, most high requires of us to walk, to walk out in humility and humbleness of heart before him. Amen. And in verse two, it says for all, it's, um, it says for all those things my hand has made, and all those things exist, says the Lord, but on this will I look on him who is poor and of a contrite spirit. Now, also in that, I wanted to read, um, I don't know if I gave you this one last week, Psalms 11, 4, and it says, the Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven and his, his eyes behold, his eyelids test the children of men. Amen. Verse 3. He who kills a bull, and this is a transition right here. So the most high said, he who kills a bull is as if he slays a man. He who sacrifices a lamb is as he who breaks a dog's neck. He who offers a grain offering as if he offers swine's blood. And he who burns incense is as if he blesses an idol just as they have chosen their own ways and their soul delights 
in their abominations. So the Most High said, what is the point of you uh, do, um, performing these um, the, the um, mm, sacrifices when your life does not change? And he says, basically, he says, it's an abomination before me. So don't, don't even waste your time doing it because it's sickening to, it's putrefying to him, especially when we haven't turned from our sins. This is what he's saying to them. You haven't turned from your sins. You're still doing the same thing. This is the, what you're doing now is just, <clears throat> you're just performing a ritual. You've changed nothing. Your life hasn't changed. And um, in that, I've, uh, it takes us back to Isaiah. And I think I gave this to you last week, Isaiah 1. Verses 10 through 17, and it reads, Hear the word of the Lord, ye rulers of Sodom, and give ear unto the law of our God, ye people of Gomorrah. To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me, says the Lord? I'm full of the burnt offerings of rams and of fat fed beasts. I delight not in the blood of bullocks or lambs or of he goats. When you come to appear before me, who's required this from your hand to tread my courts? Bring no more vain oblations. Incense is an abomination unto me. The new moons and Sabbaths, the calling of assemblies, I cannot endure. It is iniquity, even a solemn meeting. Your new moons and your appointed feasts, my soul hates. They are a trouble unto me, and I'm weary of bearing them. And when you spread forth your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. Yea, when you make many prayers, I will not hear your hands are full of blood. Wash you, make yourself clean and put away the evil of your doings from before my eyes and cease to do evil. Learn to do well and seek judgment. Relieve the oppressed, judge the fatherless and plead for the widow. So that reflects all, you know, back what we read in Isaiah 1. Okay, the, it, the most highest, and he's saying this himself here as we read here in 66. He says, he said, I hate it. He said, because your life is just an abomination. Amen. Verse four. Isaiah uh, 66, verse four. So I would choose their delusions and bring their fears on them. Because when I, when I called, no one answered. And when I spoke, they did not hear. But they did evil before my eyes and chose that in which I do not delight. So I have a question. When it says here in verse 4, it says, um, when I called, no one answered. And when I spoke, no one heard. Well, how exactly was it the most high was um, calling them and, and, and um, speaking to them? In what manner during that time? Anyone can answer. Prophets. Absolutely. It was by the prophets. Yeah. And it was more than one. As we've been reading over Isaiah, we could see it was more than one. They had several. Um, and, you know, both um, both of the tribes, you know, the northern and the southern, they all had uh, prophets during that time. Amen. And they were speaking with the most high tell them, but no one was listening. No one was answering. In fact, they were just killing the prophets. Amen. Mm -hmm. Uh, verse five, hear the word of the Lord, you who tremble at his word, your brethren who hated you, who cast you out for my name's sake said, let the Lord be glorified that we may see your joy, but they shall be ashamed. So the one, and, it, and it's like that today, there are those who are going to serve God. They're pretending like they love God, but they really don't. They're amongst it, but he's saying their own people, you know, was amongst them, those that didn't want to know what the Lord was speaking, but those, there were those who were trying to walk out righteousness and they were hated by the ones who did it. In verse six, it says the sound of noise from the city, a voice from the temple, the voice of the Lord who fully repays his enemies. The most high going to begin in his house when he begins judgment. And this is exactly what he means right here. This is what has been saying. The sound of noise from the city, a voice from the temple, the voice of the Lord who re fully repays his enemies. He's going to begin his judgment in the house of the Lord. That's where he's going to begin. He's starting with them. Those, the leaders, the leaders, 
He said, they're the ones, you know, when we've read earlier, they're the one who are leading his people astray. The kings who want to do what they want to do, who didn't want to hear from the prophets and, <laughs> and those who wanted to go their own way. Okay, verse um, seven, before, now here's a transition here. It says, before she was in labor, she gave birth. Before her pain came, she delivered a male child. And we know this is our Messiah, okay? Who has heard such a thing and who's seen such things? Shall the earth be made to give birth in one day or shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion was in labor, she gave birth to her children. And so, you know, and, and I mentioned this last week. This is one of the scriptures that is used to kind of, uh, that, that the people who are currently residing in Israel, they use this based on the whole fact that they won the war in one day and they became a nation in one day. So they use this scripture for that. This is one. And in fact, um, let me see, I had, it was in, oh, yeah. Is it here? Oh. oh, I didn't bring that one. Cause it, I think it is, Give me one minute. Might be in Ezekiel. Ezekiel 37. One minute. <clears throat> okay, I thought I had that, but I did not. <clears throat> I do have it, but it was actually the whole, the whole is um for that whole one day war. It was just a little synopsis about that, but <clears throat> we'll go on. I thought I had that, and I do. I just don't remember exactly what page. I thought I marked it, but I guess I did not. So we'll go ahead. <clears throat> um, Isaiah 66, um, verse nine. Now, well, Isaiah 66, 8, and it says, who has heard such a thing? Who has seen such things? Shall the earth be made to give birth in one day or shall a nation be born at once? Because the most high said, when he does do this, he's gonna move and it's gonna, he's gonna move in such a way that he's gonna make things correct all. It's gonna, like, gonna be in one day. He said he's gonna complete what he started. <clears throat> he's gonna complete what he started. And it says in verse nine, shall I bring to the time of birth and not cause delivery? Says the Lord, shall I who cause delivery shut up the womb? Says our, your God. <clears throat> and then verse 10, and it's a, it, it's a transition. It says, rejoice with Jerusalem and be glad with her. All you who love her, rejoice for joy with her. All you who mourn for her, that you may feed and be satisfied with the consolation of her bosom, that you may drink deeply and be delighted with the abundance of her glory. For thus says the Lord, behold, I will extend peace to her like a river and the glory of the Gentiles like a flowing stream. Then you shall feed on her, on her side shall ye be carried and be dandled on her knees. <clears throat> I want to kind of stop right there and I want to go back and I'm going to read from the New Living Translation. And I want to start at um, verse 7. 
And it says, before the birth pains even begin, Jerusalem gives birth to a son. Who's ever seen anything as strange as this? Who ever heard of such a thing? Has a nation ever been born in a single day? Has a country ever come forth in a mere moment? But by the time Jerusalem birth pains begin, her children will be born. Would I ever bring this nation to the point of birth and then not deliver it, asked the Lord? No, I would never keep this nation from being born, says your God. Rejoice with Jerusalem and be glad with her, all you who love her and all you who mourn for her drink deeply of her glory, even as an infant drinks at its mother's comforting breast. This is what the Lord says. I will give Jerusalem a river of peace and prosperity. So basically what is being said here, and <laughs> when the most high does bring this nation when he delivers it and this nation and he returns his people to this back to Jerusalem and they become a nation, he's going to, he said in verse 12, this is what he says. I will give Jerusalem a river of peace and prosperity. Okay. And then he says the wealth of the nations will flow to her. Her children be nursed at her breast and carried in her arms and held on her lap. And I will comfort you there in Jerusalem as a mother comforts her child. And when you see these things, your hearts will rejoice and you will flourish like the grass. Everyone will see the Lord's hand of blessing on his servants. When that comes to pass, we will see these things. All these things will come to pass. Okay. Let me see. First, let me see. Verse. Okay. Isaiah uh, 51 verse three. And I think I gave you this last week. And it says the Lord will comfort Israel again and have pity on her ruins. Her desert will blossom like Eden. Her barren wilderness like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found there and songs of thanksgiving will fill the air. Well, that ain't going on right now. Zechariah 10, verses 6 through 12. I will strengthen Judah and save Israel, and I will restore them because of my compassion. And it will be as though I never rejected them. For I am the Lord their God who will hear their cries. The people of Israel become, will become like mighty warriors, and their hearts will be uh, made happy as if by wine. Their children too will see it and be glad and their hearts will rejoice in the Lord. When I whistle to them, they will come running for I've redeemed them from the few who are left and they will grow as numerous as they were before. Though I have scattered them like seeds among the nations, they will still remember me in distant lands and they and their children will survive and return again to Israel. And I will bring them back from Egypt and gather them from Assyria, I will resettle them in Gilead and Lebanon until there is no more room for them all. And they will pass safely through the sea of distress for the waves of the sea will be held back and the waters of the Niles will dry up. The pride of Assyria will be crushed and the rule of Egypt will end. By my power, I will make my people strong and my authority and by my authority, they will go wherever they wish. I, the Lord have said, spoken okay so let's go back to isaiah 66 um verse 14 and it says when you see these things your heart will rejoice and you will flourish like the grass and everyone will see the lord's hand of blessing on his servants and his anger against his enemies see the lord is coming with fire and his and his swift chariots wore a roar like a whirlwind. He will bring punishment with the fury of his anger and the flaming fire of his hot rebuke. The Lord will punish the world by fire and by his sword. He will judge the earth and many will be killed by him. Verse 16. Let's see. I think I had something here. Uh, 
No, 19. Verse 17, those who consecrate and purify themselves in a sacred garden with its idols in the center, feasting on pork and rats and other detestable meats will come to a terrible end, says the Lord. Now, I'm going to tell you something right now. I had to stop right there because I recently saw something where these people was roasting uh, mice and eating bugs. Now, I know. <laughs> But I went to Leviticus and there were certain bugs that the Most High did allow as clean. And they were with the locusts, okay? It, it had to be a certain way. They had to be like locusts, had them joints like locusts. It, it, it describes which one. But they eat stuff like this. They just eat everything else. Like, oh my God, these people just can't be human. <laughs> because they were just eating everything. I mean, like these mice and these rats, they just skin them like nothing. I mean, like, we, you know, I'm like, oh, my goodness. Like we would do, I guess, deer or something. And they just toss them in there and fry them or whatever. It, it, people still do this. And they still worship these same pagan idols because we've seen it. Because a lot of these nations still are praying to these same deities. It hasn't changed. Amen. In verse um, 18, it says, I can see what they are doing and I know what they are thinking. So I will gather all nations and people together and they will see my glory. And see, you know, this is the end time word here, okay? So even the Most High said, even when he gathered, bring Israel, all his people back, it's going to be at a later time. And it's going to be a, all of this stuff come together. And he said, I, he says, um, so I will gather all the nations and people together and they will see my glory. And I will perform a sign among them. And I will send those who survive to be messengers to the nations, to Tarshish, to the Libyans, and the Lydians who are famous archers, to Tubal and Greece, and to all the lands beyond the sea. Now, I want to read something here. Um, I didn't give this one to you guys last week. It was, uh, what is it? Because this is a latter word, but it has occurred. It's in Luke 2, Luke 2, 34. Luke 2, 34. And it says, then Simeon blessed and said to Mary, his mother, behold, this child is destined for the fall and rising of many in Israel and for a sign which will be spoken against. So the Messiah was, he was said he would be a sign. Amen. And let's see, back here to verse 19, finish this up. And it says, and to all the lands beyond the sea that have not heard of my fame or seen my glory, they will declare my glory to the nations. Verse 20. Yeah, verse 20. And they will bring the remnant of your people back. See, this hasn't, this is an end time thing. They're going to bring the remnant of your people back from every nation and they will bring them to my holy mountain in Jerusalem as an offering to the Lord. And they will ride on horses and in chariots and wagons on mules and camels, says the Lord. Now, if write this down here, this verse. Um, uh, Isaiah 43, five, verses five through six. And it says, since thou was precious in my sight, Thou hast been honorable, and I've loved thee. Therefore will I give men for thee and people for thy life. Fear not, for I am with thee, and I will bring thy seed from the east and gather thee from the west. And I will say to the north, give up, and to the south, keep not back. Bring my sons from far and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Even every one that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory, and I have formed him. Yea, I have made him. And Isaiah 49, 22, thus says the Lord God, behold, I will lift up my hands to the Gentiles and I will set up my standard 
to the people and they shall bring thy sons in their arms and thy daughters shall be carried up on their, on their shoulders. Isaiah 60 verse four, lift up your eyes all around and see, they all gather together and they come to you. Your son shall come from afar and your daughters shall be nursed at your side. <clears throat> so back to um, Isaiah 21. And it says, and I will appoint some of them to be my priests and Levites and I, the Lord, have spoken. 22, as surely as my new heavens and earth will remain, so will you always be my people with a name that will never disappear, says the Lord. All humanity will come to worship me from week to week and from month to month. And as they go out, they will see the dead bodies of those who have rebelled against me. For the worms that devour them will never die and the fire that burns them will never go out. All who pass by will view them with utter horror. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So the most high still, he closed Isaiah still with a promise that he is going to regather his, his people and all those that are in Christ, the Gentiles as well. Amen. So there's a promise still to the end that even everything we've read, the punishment, the judgments and the captivities, which he said are a sign. <laughs> that will always follow them when they sin. It, captivity was going to be one of the punishments. We see that, but at the end, at the final uh, chapter of Isaiah, at the end, he leaves with a promise to regather his people. They will be returned to him. <laughs> it is a promise. So do we have any questions or any alibis? If not, we'll go ahead on to, to our questions. Okay, the first question was, upon whom will the Lord look with favor? It's two parts, so let's do the first one first. Upon whom will the Lord look with favor? The kind person, the one who is humble, submissive in spirit. Contrite heart. Absolutely. Absolutely. The poor and contrite in spirit, yeah. the one who trembles at his word, the humble, those who, um, Sister Pat said the same thing. It's, it's all means the same thing. Uh, Elder Barnes, you said something else? Yeah, um, I was just, just, just meditating on a contrite heart to get a, I know it's a humble heart, it's a submissive heart, but I don't know if I'm, I have the full understanding of that. Contrite is. That's exactly what it means before God. And then he goes on to say those who take care of the, the widow and take care of those of the, the humble, that humble person before God who mm -hmm. takes care of the widow, the widow and the homeless, the, I mean, the um, the orphan and, and that, that humble spirit. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. You, do, you have it correct. Yeah, because walking humble before our God, obeying his word, because you can't we can't be humble and then be disobedient and in sin. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we can't be you can't be humble and prideful at the same time. Absolutely. And prideful and arrogant because it, it, you either one or, or the other one. Because Absolutely. If you prideful and arrogant, you, you're going to be like some. Um, I don't mention no names, but. <laughs> Some people we hear on the news where you you think the world is your own and I got this I don't I don't need nobody else and I'm in control which which um which nobody is absolutely got to be able to submit to God what the Bible says submit under the mighty hand of the God and He will exalt you and that's what you know I see it as being just submitting to God and just He He will take care of you He will provide and and lead you and guide you absolutely. And, you know, I was mentioning earlier in some texts, in, in some scriptures, some um, um, 
the, the uh, scripture. It said, um, it says the broken, the broken and contrite spirit. He says he cannot, he will not, he cannot deny it. Yeah. In the most high, he, he, he can't, he, 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 he said, I just cannot deny. That's his love. That's where his heart is for those who are humble before him and who, who really fear the Lord and obey his word mm -hmm. and walk in, you know, in um, righteousness. And when you know we're not righteous outside of Christ, so we already know those who are not in Christ. Well, the, that's it, humility starts somewhere. Amen. And salvation is it. Amen. 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 You got some. Then the second part of that question was: Upon whom will he not look with favor? Those who choose their own way and uh, delight in their their sin. The, absolutely. Absolutely. Those who choose their own way. And you know what? Now, when I read that and it was talking about those who choose their own way, it made me think about um, the um, the the the, uh, mm, the that um, gosh, the word is right here and I can't see it uh, where he talks about the being invited to the the. Uh, the, the 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 dinner the the wedding feast I'm sorry the wedding feast and he said how did you get in you know you you're here but you're not you're not even Great, you, probably absolutely yeah. <laughs> absolutely and it made me think of that because people who think they can find their own way of holiness their own way to righteousness yeah and the most high said no there's only one way that's yeah. right and he recognized that we couldn't even follow that then. Our ancestors couldn't do it then. So he sent Christ. He knew. The Isaiah said um, it was either, it, it was a couple of chapters prior to what we just read. He said, we need to be saved. Mm -hmm. Isaiah said, we need to be saved. And yet, and behold, the Most High already had a plan. He already had a plan. Amen. And um, question number two, it says, what are, it says, what are those who tremble at the word of the Lord told to do? Something they could look forward to. So that we can, so that they could see his joy, see your joy, but they will be, uh, I'm going to have to read it because it says for the namesake. Uh, Show us with Jerusalem. Yes, they will be able to rejoice with mm -hmm. Jerusalem. Yes. Yeah, that's why his blessing. God be glorified. Yeah. Rejoice with Jerusalem. Yeah. Be joyful Absolutely. with Jerusalem. Amen. Amen. Those that um who do tremble at his word, who do obey, you know, he said they will be able to rejoice in the blessings to come <clears throat> to Jerusalem. Amen. And question number three was what will happen to the wicked? Mm -mm. <laughs> What is going to happen to the wicked? They would be judged. Yeah. yeah. Judge. I wrote judged by the fire. That's correct. Fire. <laughs> fire and flame and sword. Fire and sword. There yeah. you go. The fire yeah. and sword. Fire yeah. and sword. Yeah. His anger and with fury against them. Wow. That's correct. That is correct. That was in 15, uh, it encompassed 15 through 17. Anybody? Nothing is hidden from God. I was looking, you know, not everything. God's judgment, he said, there's nothing that's going to be hidden from him. He sees everything. And even right now, we got a problem with that. We think God don't see what we do. <laughs> Let's forget that we do. We really forget that God sees and knows everything. 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 There's nothing hidden from him. We can hide stuff from one another, but we can't hide stuff from God. <laughs> no. Amen. Amen. No. We can't hide stuff from him. And he's not, you know, the most high is not moved by our by our outward appearance. He looks at our hearts. Amen. Amen. It's the heart that the most high looks at. Amen. Okay, so it's our heart that you know that, that and, and this word tells us it's a deceitful thing, it's deceitful above all things because sometimes we can think that we're right, 
We got it all together. We really don't. But right. we can't be righteous outside of Christ. It's his word that brings us correction and yeah. it forces us to line ourselves up Amen. To, to righteousness is his word. That's yeah. why we have to stay in it. Yeah, we only yeah, we only righteous through him, through his Absolutely. righteousness. We're the righteousness of God through Jesus Christ only. Amen. Nothing we can do, nothing we can work for, is nothing we can yeah. boast about or whatever. Yeah. It's only through him. <laughs> Amen. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's only one way. One way to the Father, and that is through the Son. Amen. Amen. So um, the the final question, I think number four. That's a and it says, um, what final picture is given as comfort to the captives in Babylon? Because remember, even Isaiah still, you know, he was still talking about them going into captivity in Babylon. You know, that went all the way from what Hezekiah, if we remember that, about what Hezekiah did. And in fact, it goes all the way into Jeremiah. <laughs> Jeremiah still prophesying until the very day that they actually go into captivity. Okay. But here it says, what final picture is given as comfort to the captives in Babylon? Because Isaiah's prophesied, he's prophesied his own hand. God will gather everyone together, all those who are, are his. Eventually, yes, in the end, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. They, they would proclaim, they would, he said, they would proclaim my glory among the nations. Absolutely. Yeah. And he going to deal with the, the, he said, and the corpses of those yeah. who transgress. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> they said they will be where the worm does not die. He said the worm does not die. No, it's the fire is quenched. It's not yeah, quenched. Then it go out. <laughs> now that right now there should just be enough for anybody. Cause I you know, I tell people all the time, I don't even like being burnt. I, you know, you just think about, you just, it's, it, it's something that never ends. It's a continuous, never ending Thing. Thing. <laughs> on and on. On and on. You're consciously aware of it. You're not there. You're consciously aware of the worms eating your flesh. You're con consciously aware of the fire that's burning. You feel and you know everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is something. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Yeah. That truly is something. Amen. So that was our last of our questions, and, and that was the end of chapter 66. Amen. Amen. I posed a question last week um, for the, um, that I, I put out there if um, anyone would like to comment on what they did learn while we were in Isaiah. And if they still had any questions that they wanted to ask, we could talk about that. Did anybody have any, you know, just go ahead and just, just tell us what you have learned since we've been in Isaiah. Well, for me, um, you know, you think that God is a harsh God because of all these, these judgments. But then after studying, you realize that he's given us time and time again to repent and come, come back. And so when he does judge us, he's just he's he's right i mean he's sovereign he can he does what he wants but if we don't fall back in line we deserve everything that we we get and this really caused me to reflect even how i treat people because in the earlier books chapters that we read you know um they were judged because of how they treated others and so i've been, even been thinking about how i you know am with other people amen 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 that was even me too. I just reading that part how he 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 was really he really stressed the fact how we um Israel and Judah treated one another. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. and how you know he was because he was really real and you're right that I, I and the mercy of God. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, mm -hmm. mercy. That's because it. I'm gonna tell you, I didn't realize they were that bad, they were terrible. <laughs> I honestly did it. I was, you know, all this time, you know, we read it, but then when you read it all together and you start pulling in all the supporting 
um, scriptures and, and reading also from the other, as the other prophets were also prophesying to them about the same stuff. They were wicked. Yes. Yeah. yes. Yeah. They were truly wicked. And God, I, I, what I really, really learned and saw here is God's mercy. Mercy. Yeah. His yeah. love and kindness. He is so merciful. Yeah. Even yet until the end, even as he closes out in Isaiah, he still leaves a promise to yeah. regather. Mm -hmm. That's right. To regather. Go ahead, Precious. Precious it, oh, I'll go ahead. It does show you his mercy. I was thinking the same thing Sister Liz was saying. It's amazing how he he punished them, but he would all he, he said, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna look at you for a little while. I'm, I'm going to turn away from you, but I'm going to come back to you. And it's just time and time. It reminds you that scripture, and I can't remember right where it said, he's, he's married to the backslider. Yes. He loves you. That's, that's just a, I mean, I was, I, you get overwhelmed when you really truly read Isaiah and look at the mercy and how, how he calls them his own. And he talks to them with terms of endearment. Yes. Even when they have been so, 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 you can't even say it so so with it you know yeah. so that should be for that should be for us so that we walk circumspect yeah we walk very carefully before the lord you know um for me it, it it also made me realize that he loves his people yeah yeah i mean that to me is just he just he loves his people and we have to really, and so when 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 somebody loves you like that, you want to walk upright before them. You want to do the thing that pleases him, because yeah. of the of the of the love and the care. So you know that's that's what I. Yes, <clears throat> yes, his love for us, and yeah. gosh, he's just. I mean, he his love and kindness, and he knew he he already had a plan because he knew that we weren't able to keep the law. He knew it, but there was no way. But so he already devised a plan that mm -hmm. he was, his son would come and, and, and bear, you know, and, and die for us, be the, the, the ultimate sacrifice, the propitiation for our sins that we could come back to the father. Yes. And yeah. you know what, what a, you know what? And this is also to me. When we don't take the time really to really come before God in prayer and in relationship, all that Jesus bore for us to be able to do that, to me, it's like a slap in the face. It's like we take no regard for all that Christ went through for us, that we could come back to the Father. He bore that for all the sin. He bore everything because we definitely couldn't bear it. Mm -mm. Yeah. We couldn't bear it, you know, and he did that for us. God yeah. already had a plan to restore us. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I, I know for me, so Silver, too, that um, the love of God, God showed towards his people and how we are not so much different from Israel back then. Yeah. We're, we're the same as they are. We go through the same struggles. We do the same thing, even though it's a different time and age. But you know what? We have challenges too. It may not be the exact same thing, but you know, sometimes we 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 go off the 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 yeah. straight and narrow path. And the Lord has to get us back on the, the um straight and narrow path, following his ways in, in whichever way he has to do it. So Absolutely. it's just the, the love that he has for us. And he is always there. He's always there. He's always there calling us. Even when we stray away, he's always, he's still there. Like he did with Israel. He still call, he calls us. Yes. Like we learned today, he called them, even though, you know, they, they didn't um, respond to him at times, but he was still there calling them and loving them showing his grace and mercy towards them and, and showing how he wants to bless them and he wants to keep them and, and continue to um, 
care for them and have a relationship with them. Yes, absolutely. Amen. Amen. A absolutely. That's powerful. Uh, now, who's going to do you like that? Nobody. nobody but the most high. <laughs> Only the most there's high. No greater love. That's there's right. No greater love. Yes, sir. No greater love. No greater love that he gave up his only begotten son for Amen. us. Amen. There's no greater love than that. And there's no greater love than that. Amen. Amen. Does anyone else want to comment? Sister Sylvia. Yeah. Uh, I mean, throughout the Bible, uh, we we see that um, man often turn his back on God. Mm -hmm. But I was curious to know how how we really got into creating something ourselves and start worshiping them after you created it with your own hands and then you call it a god mm. uh, you know when uh, we was reading uh, chapter 41 in the book of Isaiah yeah. and God challenged them to do something uh, okay. Either do good or evil. Just do something. Just fall over, as you said, you know. And I was just, I mean, it, it just, um, I know how we today, you know, you can, you know, we, we, I don't think we worship our cars and things like that, but you know, it's, it's, it's not like what they were doing. Yeah. I mean, they, they were actually uh, serving their own children up. You know, and and uh, all the offerings that was made before they were they were just uh, doing the same thing that they would do, uh, making sacrifices like they should have done before the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. So I I, I have to uh, uh, look into that and see why is it uh, that man would actually make something himself and then call it a god. Wow. And you know, that, that, that's good because the most high told them when they, before they went into the land, don't do what the other nations that are around you do. And you know what? The most high had already got a reputation at, uh, amongst all the nations that were around when he brought them out of Egypt. Everyone knew the great and mighty feats that had been done that God had performed for Israel. And mm -hmm. so they knew that his, he was the real God. He was the true and living God. Amen. They knew this. And so even when we read, we read, you know what? The most high, they's like, they, God, is, God is upholding his own reputation. And he was even, there was something we read. We read it uh, uh, a week or so ago. He said, when they were punished, the most high was, you know, he said he himself was also being punished. He said, when, you know, when they were down, he was down, you know, because they, like the nations knew and the whole intent always was for Israel to be the one where God could use them to, to, to um, reach the other nations yeah. so that they would also recognize that he was God and that they would follow him and serve him as well. It had always been his, his, his desire to be the God of the whole world. You know, he still had his own holy people. He still desired to do what he has yet done through Jesus Christ. Amen. Because even when we see how he brought um, Israel out of Egypt, it was what, 70 something when they went in there? Well, how many they came out by the thousands? Yeah. So it wasn't just them, it was those also that cleaved to them. They came out mm -hmm. and they obviously had to have married some of the Egyptians. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there were those who cleaved to them and they came out with them. And we see even yet now, when you really look at that and how the most high is yet bringing the Gentiles in due to Israel being cut off, the branch being cut off, but the most high say how greater, even when the, the uh, Israel comes back. <laughs> So just like Paul said, has he for, for, uh, uh, forsaken them? He said, heaven forbid. Oh, no, by no means. But they were cut off so you could be grafted in. Mm -hmm. So that the Gentiles could be grafted in. Amen. Amen.
not to go do what the other what the Gentiles were doing. Amen. That's right. Amen. They 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 flipped the script. <laughs> Amen. Anybody else? Sorry about that. I would say for me, I, I kind of agree with everybody uh, saying it just seemed like about probably two thirds of the way through. It seemed like a light bulb went off in my life. I mean, the same thing that happened when it was going through uh, Revelation with Pastor Ed, because, you know, I used to look at Isaiah as so complex, but it's very simple. I mean, he really put things in perspective. You know, the same thing they're doing, you know, we're doing today, probably even worse, to be honest with you. Even talking about the sacrificing of children, I see that we don't raise our children up in the Lord. We allow them to do and go their own way. We're really sacrificing our children up to the enemy. The same thing that they're doing, we're doing. We just do it in different ways. But it's simple because God really, because of his love and his mercy, he's given us a savior. He's given us a choice. It's very simple. Either you trust in him or you trust in yourself. You continue your sin. You make up your own religion. You do your own thing. God has a great track record. He's proven again and again who he is, what he's going to do, how he's going to deliver us. He makes yeah. it plain and simple. His way is so simple. It's just like he said, okay, I put before you life and death. Choose life. This is the way that been trusted and tried by God and by Christ. I've, it's really talks about the coming Messiah that he's yeah. offering up to us as a sacrifice for our sins. We don't, all we have to do is trust and believe in him. Everything that we see here that they've done in the other nations, it points to today's time exactly. Then and now it's the same. And he just simply give us a choice. Either you trust in me and you'll beat it to my word or you go your own way and this is what's going to happen to you, that sin will be judged. Yeah. You know, I will gather my people, whether you think you're an Israelite or you're the Gentile, you don't have to worry about it. God's going to call you out. He will gather. He, he's going to gather his people. Whether you confuse or not, doesn't matter. He will call you. You're going to know it. We have yeah. the Holy Spirit. On the other side, if you want to walk in your own ways and in your wickedness, he giving you your faith. Wickedness will be judged. They're going to come an end to wickedness right here. When his son appeared, when he does what he has to do, if you're on the wrong side, that's your fate. So to me, it makes it plain and simple. Absolutely. It's, it's, you, it, but it's our choice. I mean, you know, so like Liz said and everyone else said, we don't, we would not have an excuse. He, God make, his words seem so complex, but when you get in it, he's very simple. You, we're sin, we have sin. I'm giving you a Messiah. This is your way out. This is your salvation. This is the only way of your salvation. There is hope. Yes, I'm going to judge, but here I'm giving you hope. You have a hope in the Messiah. Either you accept him or you don't, plain and simple. Amen. 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 And he's long suffering. Mm -hmm. yeah, he's long suffering mm -hmm. to yes, give us like that opportunity. Amen. Praise God. Anybody else? Well, just briefly, uh, so Syria, I was really absorbing it all. And like Pastor Dave, some of the others that say uh had mentioned, and even talking tonight, it was like you get a a, a deeper revelation of how significant it is to know the perspective of God toward humanity. It's not an organization. I can't point it off on anybody else. It's each of our personal responsibility to adhere and adjust ourselves and submit ourselves to God. And it's not a religious thing. It's an individual thing. Amen. And and as we were talking about that from last time, we were talking about, you know, certain revelations, and so much goes on today, I sort of get uh, not so much confused, I can't say I understand all the vernacular, but I'd use the term that I don't probably use that, the term that's being woke, like being aware, mm -hmm. like experiencing the new birth, is not only to give us an awareness of who we are, that's one aspect, but to me, what's most vital is we get revelation of what our ancestors did wrong, and we should govern ourselves not to keep repeating the same errors. See, if you truly get revelation and you see, okay, I, I've studied this and I know that I'm, you know, Hebrew and I know that I have the promise of Abraham now and we look and see what the other people the promise did with the promise and we do the same thing, that's virtually unforgivable. 
Yeah. We, we complicate that which is simple. And we simplify that which is complicated. So that, that wokeness, one of the benefits of being woke, to use that term, which I can't really necessarily define, is we become aware of what's been done wrong in the past. Yeah. But what I, I'm like Elder Jones, I, what I don't understand is how we are at this stage and still doing the same, making the same mistakes. Yeah. Now I understand that none of us are perfect and none of ourselves can go without, you know, missing the mark on the day. But I'm talking, it's things that goes on in the name of church now that is ridiculous. I don't understand how anybody that has any awareness of God can tolerate what go, what's going on. I, I really don't. And affiliate with certain people and do certain things. Yes. That that part it is mystifying me. Maybe I'm getting old and just <laughs> waxing prophetically or something. But that, that's the value of it. It gives us the guardrails. It's like, you know, being a soldier, I'm going to stop on this. There's a line uh, or minefield. And, you know, they're showing this is where the enemy traps are. And they've been marked. And we still, some still go walk out there. They know where it is and go walk on the same mind spiritually over and over again and make excuses. And one thing that I would think about what the other John said, why the people started being God, the number of reasons for control, mm -hmm. yeah. make it easy. See, if I make up my own God, if I can get people to follow me now, you know, all the constraints are off. I'm really just fulfilling the desires of my evil heart. But I'm mm -hmm. calling it something good when really it's something yeah. evil. Right. And the thing is, people that are led believers or maybe true believers can't discern between that which is good and right and that which is evil and leads to damnation. Amen. Amen. I think it was chapter we read it last week. I think it was in um, chapter um, 65 where they were saying, <clears throat> I think it read it was how you know, they got some of them were like, oh, I'm too holy. You can't talk. You know, they create their own holiness and their own righteousness. I'm too holy. You know, don't talk to me. Don't touch me. You know, you know, <clears throat> divide. They divide their own uh, self righteousness. They were doing their own thing. I think that was in um, 65. We read last week. Yeah. 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 Was. Yeah. yeah. And you know what? <clears throat> and we see that even today. Okay, I'm too holy. I'm the pastor. <clears throat> you know, the, you know, you, um, I, and you need to talk to one of my um <laughs> bishops, my, my elders, or or to my deacon. Can't come and talk to me because you know I'm too holy. They put themselves in this whole this whole position of I'm untouchable, I'm holy, I'm way up here. You know, like like they're the Pope or somebody like he puts himself in that position. Don't touch me. You know, the Pope like, oh, don't touch me. <laughs> just, <laughs> you know, that whole kind of thing is just it's just really strange even. Amen. Anyone else? Hallelujah. Um, anybody else? No? Well, if we have no one else that wants to um, come in or have anything they want to add, we'll go ahead and uh, it's been a year. Can you all believe it's been a year? It has been a year, actually. I know. Wow. It has gone by so fast. I can't believe it's been a year. Praise yeah, yeah. Like a whole year. Great year. Wow. Yeah, God is good. He is yes, he is. Yes, he is. And let's see, we're in amazing times. This is it's just we're in awesome times, guys. Mm -hmm. We're just command. I just believe we're command. We just stay in a place of prayer, and and just stay before God and and just love one another and and keep uh, each other covered in prayer. Amen. Amen. So mm -hmm. I'm gonna go ahead. If there's no more. Um, and no one else wants to add anything, I'm going to go ahead and um, close in prayer. So, Sylvia, just a quick announcement. We're going to... Okay. Um, it's, been, it's been a great year in Isaiah, my God. So we're going to probably... I was going to announce on Sunday, but we're going to give uh, everybody a little bit of time to kind of reminisce a little intermission, intermission to, between um, on the 20th and the 27th. We have a two-week break. 
we're going to start back up uh, Wednesday night on the third, the third right. of April, and we're okay. going to be starting. That'll give us time to get the get the questions online, and um, little intermission, just intermission, mission. Sorry for two weeks on the twenty twenty seven, just to reminisce on uh, the book of Isaiah. We wouldn't do that, but we're going to start on the third of April. We're going to actually start in the book of John. John. And that'll give us time to get the questions online and everyone to start. But encourage everyone to just really go back and kind of reminisce and allow the Holy Spirit to continue to give you revelation on what we just read and how it applied to us today. And, and I love what Pat says as an individual. I love mm -hmm. what you said earlier. This is the word is a mirror. And I know we can find each and every one of ourselves in the word and corrections that we should make in revelation to us. But and I thank God for that. But we'll be starting back on April the 3rd, and we'll start in the book of John. And the questions should be um, online by next week. Okay. Amen. Let's just start. Amen. All right. All right. We, any more? Um, anything, anything else anyone want to add? Are we good? Amen. I'll go ahead and close in prayer. Father God, we just thank you, Father God. We thank you, we thank you Father. Thank you, thank you. Father God, we just thank you, Father God, for this whole time, Father God, that you led us through the book of Isaiah. And Father God, we thank you for you answered our prayer, oh God, and you revealed yourself to us, oh God. You are a holy God. You are a loving God. You are a merciful God. Father God, you are righteous and you require a righteous and a holy people, oh God. And we thank you, Father God, that you knew, Father God, that we could not keep the laws ourselves, oh God. So Father God, you sent us your only son, oh God, and he shed his blood for us, oh God. And he covered us in, 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 and, and made a way, oh God, that for us to come back unto you, oh God. And we thank you, Father God, in the name of Jesus, oh God, Father God, for keeping us and loving us, oh God, and drawing us back to you, oh God. We thank you for calling us. We thank you for choosing us, oh God. We pray, almighty God, that you be glorified through us, oh God, that we bring glory to your name, oh God. Father God, in these last days and in these last hours, oh God, we pray that you are glorified in and through us, oh God. So Father God, we just pray right now, oh God, as we depart, Father God, from one another, but not from your presence, oh God. We pray, Father God, that you would continue to keep us. We pray that you would continue to minister to us by your spirit, oh God. Father God, we pray in the name of Jesus that you will continue to cover and keep us, oh God. We thank you, Father God, for being our rear and our front guard, oh God. We thank you, Father God, that you are the lifter of our heads, oh God. We thank you, Father God, that we are not ashamed, Father God. Father God, for you are our God and there is none other but thee, oh God. Father God, we pray, Father God, and ask that you would just continue, Father God, to encamp your angels round about us, Father God. Every Everyone that is here tonight, oh God, and Father God, every member of Kingdom Covenant Ministries and their families, oh God. Father God, we ask, oh God, that you will continue to keep us, lifting us up, least by your angels, least we should dash our feet against a stone, oh God. Father God, we ask, Father God, that you will continue to keep our children, our grandchildren, keep them safe, oh God. In the name of Jesus, Father God, we ask, oh God, that you will continue to, Father God, keep us, that you don't allow any weapon that would form against us to prosper against us, oh God. No matter what form it comes, oh God, in the name of Jesus, Father God. Father God, we pray, Father God, rendering ourselves to you, Father God, as holy vessels, oh God, for your honor, oh God. Father God, that you may use us in what manner you wish, oh God. In the name of Jesus, Father God, we pray, Father God, that you would silence all other voices that are in our heads, our hearts, our minds, our spirits, oh God, that we can hear your Holy Spirit speak, oh God, in the name of Jesus, no matter what is going on around us, oh God. And Father God, we pray, Father God, that you would give us discernment, increase our discernment, oh God. We ask that you don't allow us to be deceived by man nor spirit in the name of Jesus, oh God. We thank you right now, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for loving us. We thank you for keeping us. We thank you for your provision. We thank you, Father God, for we cannot be kept if you don't keep us, oh God. So we trust you, oh God, and we trust you and you alone, oh God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Almighty Yah. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.